Yes, please. Yes. An investigation into the entrepreneurial experiences of selected Caribbean entrepreneurs in London. Essentially, um, this is the topic. And a starting point for me, and I think it's an important one, is what actually is the rationale behind looking at Caribbean entrepreneurs in London. The motivation behind this research work is based on, first of all, my Caribbean upbringing that gave me the start as an entrepreneur. I, I, I recall as a teenager, just simply taking a little table, getting to the side of the road and selling coconuts and mangoes. And I was always intrigued with the, the idea of entrepreneurship I went on to earn, to become involved in running my own taxi service and my own bus service and so on. I was always intrigued by the idea of becoming an entrepreneur and the concept of entrepreneurship. Now, the second point I want to raise is in the Caribbean, our, our context of where we are in terms of our location determines our way of life and also to some extent our entrepreneurial context. And you will see later on why I'm raising these issues. The compatibility of the existing European views on entrepreneurship in the context of Caribbean entrepreneurs in my mind was completely, completely different. What we call the Eurocentric view on entrepreneurs and the Caribbean view seem to be, in terms of my experiences, completely different. There was also a desire to interpret the experiences of these Caribbean entrepreneurs who live and work in London. I wanted to get first hand from them. What are their entrepreneurial experiences like? How, and how do they see the concept of entrepreneurship? I would. Finally, um, because of my background in accountancy, I am a, a chartered certified accountant. I work with lots of clients who come from the Caribbean and there are lots of issues that come up from time to time where they don't seem to understand, you know, why do I have to pay taxes? Why do I have to declare my earnings? And it's really a unique context to hear people who are themselves entrepreneurs look at things in such a different way to the sort of formal entrepreneurial experiences of other entrepreneurs in London. So the research purpose, the purpose of the research is to investigate the entrepreneurial experiences of selected Caribbean entrepreneurs in London. The time frame for participant selection is post Windrush, that's post 1948. The investigation is underpinned by economic theories, of course, and I have cited the theory of demand and supply, push and pull factors, resource-based theories, social and cultural capital and opportunity-based theories. These will underpin most of the research. I consider the research to be significant because the findings from it can enhance the existing body of lit literature on entrepreneurial experiences. For example, the researcher can add a Caribbean perspective to the existing views that dominate the literature on entrepreneurship. In fact, I have done uh, over the last few years quite a bit of reading around the literature and this, I mean, it's really sparse or I would say virtually non-existent um, any data on Caribbean entrepreneurs who contribute significantly in London, I must add. So the whole question of how do we conceptualize entrepreneurship? It is widely acknowledged that the field of entrepreneurship lacks a well-established, accepted definition. We have Bygrave and Hoffa, 1991, Bull and Willard, 93, Cassad, early 1986, Cunningham, 1991, Gardner, 89, and we could go on and on, Shane and Venkata, around 2000, have all explored trying to define and conceptualize on entrepreneurship from completely different perspectives. So the research aims to determine really how is entrepreneurship in itself conceptualized? I know it's a really difficult one, but I'm looking at a specific perspective, of course. 
So the relevance, Ram and Jones argue that not enough is known about ethnic migrants by arguing the divergence of experiences of different ethnic groups remains stark with African Caribbean businesses in particular facing greater difficulties than others. The literature has shown that in the United Kingdom, knowledge contributions have been made by Asian and African entrepreneurship with quite a bit of formal studies done but again, nothing on Caribbean perspective. There's a view that ethnic entrepreneurs import their own culture, their beliefs, their values, their moral principles and traditions brought from their home country. And that is well-supported research by Barrett et al. 96 and Clusterman 2012. So for my particular research, I went about um, setting up semi-structured interviews and it's quite a small sample size. 25 Caribbean entrepreneurs in London were interviewed. I've put together eight reports, white papers, green papers, on, on, in terms of key documents, in terms of policy statements and so on, on entrepreneurship, particularly as it relates to um, uh, ethnic migrant, migrant entrepreneurs. And I've also gone back to three businesses and done a significant amount of observation as to how they carry on their businesses from day to day. And of course, that provides me with a rich source of primary data. Now, it's still early days yet because I'm just about getting down to my analysis and um, I welcome suggestions, of course. But some of the teams that we're possibly looking at, I, I have a wonderful team uh, working um, with me at, at Gloucestershire. And we are looking at probably the teams of fostering relationships, creativity, motivation to achieve leadership, and opportunity seeking and risk taking as possibly some of the teams. The only one that has been confirmed actually is fostering relationships at this stage. Um, and of course, that, that is a, a work, work in progress. Now, in terms of the specific contribution to knowledge, no available data exists from the literature perused about the contribution of this specific group, that is the Caribbean entrepreneurs, towards entrepreneurship. And my aim is to create a new framework of analysis of Caribbean entrepreneurs. From the data I've looked at so far, it's very interesting. And I want to share with you some, some thoughts. <clears throat> Does conceptualization of entrepreneurship fit the Eurocentric definition? And I, I, I want to say clearly from what I've gathered so far, it seems to be completely different in terms of how entrepreneurship is conceptualized from a Caribbean perspective as compared to a Eurocentric um, perspective. And I've seen clearly 99% uh, of the data collected never ever mentioned the term profit. And I asked myself, well, why are you in business? I would, I would have thought that the main aim would be to make profit. Well, some people are saying they use their entrepreneurial ex exposure as part of their survival skills. Um, I want to use, and be careful how I say this, but there seems to be an issue of discrimination among Black Caribbeans who have said to me, they couldn't find work anywhere. There, there was lack of opportunities for them in terms of finance, support from the government, et cetera, et cetera. So they found getting into entrepreneurship as their way out of the wilderness they, they, they have developed what we call survival skills. They found it to be a very impromptu experience, not one where there was a lovely business plan and not one where they were trained to be an entrepreneur. There was no training, there was no advice, no information. It was a very much an impromptu type of experience for many of these entrepreneurs. Though some of them, I have to say, are very successful and are even millionaires today. 
they seem to be crowded out. There's a historical perspective, and I use the term crowded out to mean it's almost as if they were pushed out and um, separated because the, the data is suggesting initially because of who we are. Um, and of course, there's also a cultural dimension from the Caribbean. Um, we have this idea, we must promote we. And how could we promote we? We can do that. I think uh, Professor uh, Dr. Gertrude mentioned yesterday in our music, but another way is also in our food. So a lot of these businesses serve lovely Caribbean foods across London area. And, and they promote the Caribbean dishes and they see that as promoting um, what I would say is their culture, their ambassadors for their culture, so to speak. And as I mentioned to you, given my accounting background, when I went into these businesses, I found that these guys have no budgets, no cash flows, no financial statements, no business plan. And they are running business in, as I said, in a very informal sense. And this is very interesting to see how it's very much different to the, the normal type of entrepreneur who would have his lovely business plan, his cash flows, his financial statements, and, and his goals and so on. Um, it's very interesting that although it's completely different, there are similarities I have to, to admit. But one of the things that I've really with Caribbean entrepreneurs is this ship, which is the ability to be creative. I know that was mentioned yesterday, quite a few of the um, workshops and so on. But they, they, these guys are very, very creative and they have found a way to survive. And, and so survival skills, I would say, is really much embedded into a lot of the data I've collected, although it's quite a small sample size. So um, it's, it's just some preliminary ideas. And of course, I welcome any suggestions and questions. So I'm going to open up the floor now to any questions, suggestions, and feedback. Where we are now is getting the teams, in terms of analyzing the data of these Caribbean entrepreneurs, before we draw any firm conclusions and build that framework that we are looking for. 